Hey everybody, Steve Robinson here. Uh, as you know by now, it's workshop number three. And <clears throat> we're leaning towards the end of this workshop. And in workshop number three, the attacker or the bully, whatever you want to call him, is approaching from behind. Up to this point, we have practiced the cat stance back kick. We have practiced the crossing back kick. And last week, we practiced a move called passing the horizon. So if you're following along in your manual, I'm on page uh, 17. Strategy 13 is the cat stance back kick. Strategy 14 is the crossing back kick. And then finally, strategy 16 in your manual on page 18 is this uh, move called passing the horizon. So let's have a brief review and then we'll go ahead and continue on from there. By the way, workshop number three, the key to focus on, the golden rule, I hope you can see that. Treat others the way you would like to be treated, okay? Also, in workshop three, and we're going to do this at the end of class today, Rhonda's top three picks. Let's see what she has for today. She has mountain climbers, she has squats, we may just add a jump to that, and then she has alternating V-ups, okay? So, let's go ahead and get started. Workshop three, cat stance back kick. It's strategy number 13. You know it by now. Just a brief review. You start with your knees bent, weight to the balls of your feet. You lean in the opposite direction of the, uh, that you're kicking in, and you put your hands below your chin for balance. You put your hands below your chin to protect, okay? Remember, the knee does not lift it's the heel that chambers pulling your toes back, not pointed, but pulling your toes back towards your shin. So here's the first kick, just watch for now. Knees are bent, I'm leaning, and ah! All right, let's go ahead and shoot for five with the right leg, five with the left leg, cat stance back kick, everyone. You ready? Knees bent, guard up, look over that left shoulder if you're kicking with the left leg, and one, ah, and two, ah, and three, ah, again, you want to hit him in the belly, and four, ah, one more, and five, ah, all right, shake it out a little bit, opposite leg this time, so starting that cat stance, are your knees bent? Are you leaning in the opposite direction that you're kicking in? And finally, put your hands up, all right? Five cat stance back kicks, you wanna hit them in the belly, using the heel part of your foot, and one. Ah! Good for you, you ready? Two. Ah! Notice that I start in the cat stance, throw the kick, and then I return to the cat stance. And three. Ah! And again, two more, everyone. You ready? Four. Ah! One more, boys and girls. You ready? Five. Ah! Good for you. And remember, whatever leg you kick with, for example, if you're kicking with your left leg, you're going to be looking over that left shoulder. Okay? Let's go to the next strategy. And if you're following along in your manual, it's strategy 14. It's the crossing back kick. Now, the cat stance back kick is real powerful, all right? But the crossing back kick has a lot more power when you compare it to the cat stance back kick because you start farther away, you have time to build up more momentum, you're rotating your body when you throw the kick. All those factors, starting farther away, rotating your body, all those factors give you more power, all right? So pick a leg, right leg, left leg, it doesn't matter. You, you know the crossing back kick by now. So you start in your guard stance, dancer step. In this case, I'm gonna dancer step with my right leg, and I'm gonna dancer step behind my lead leg. Ah! And I wanna point something out here. It's not in front, okay, that's a no-no. You start with your guard up, you dancer step, your back leg, in this case, my right leg, behind my left leg. Ah! Step two, you are correct. Pivot to your cat stance. Step three, as you glance over that shoulder, and kick. Ah! Okay. Three 
we step crossing back kick, we're, we're past the middle of the workshop. We're nearing the end of the workshop. So let's just go ahead and start doing it, okay? All right. So guard is up. Dancer, pivot, kick. Good. And again, you're ready. Your guard is up. Dancer step. Pivot. What do you pivot into? Your cast dance. Kick. Good. And again, two down, three to go. Let's, let's go for it, boys and girls. Dancer step. Pivot. Kick. Good. And again, you're ready. Two more. Hands are up for balance. Hands are up for protection. The bully's over here. Dancer step. Pivot. Kick. One more, everyone. All right. Your guard is up. Crossing back kick is the name of the kick. Dancer step. Pivot to your cast stance. Kick. Good for you. All right. You know what I'm going to ask that you do? I'm going to ask that you kick with the opposite leg this time. Just as a reminder, when you kick, you want to hit with the heel part of your foot. Okay? Five crossing back kicks. The crossing back kick is a little more challenging. Actually, maybe a lot more challenging when you compare it to the first kick that you did, the cast dance back kick. There's just a lot more going on than the crossing back kick. So, crossing back kick, opposite leg, guard is up, dancer step on one, pivot on two, kick on three. Good for you. Let's go for it. Five kicks, crossing back kick. And dancer, pivot, kick. Good. Are you looking over the shoulder of the leg that you're kicking with? I'm kicking with my right leg. I want to be looking over that right shoulder. All right. Number two, guard is out. Dancer step. Pivot. You pivot into your cat stance. Kick. Ah! Good. Two down. Three to go. Your guard is out. Dancer step. Pivot into your cat stance. Kick. Ah! Good. Two more. All right, hands are up for balance, hands are up for protection. Crossing back kick is a real, real powerful kick. Dancer step, pivot, kick, ah! One more, everyone, you ready? Hands are up. Dancer step, pivot, kick, ah! Awesome. I don't know about you, but if I had a pick between keeping only one of those two kicks, first kick, cast dance back kick, Second kick, crossing back kick. If I had a pick and, and, and I were only able to keep one of those two moves, it would definitely be the crossing back kick. Like I said, it's real powerful. It's a little bit more challenging to do, okay? But uh, real, real fun move. Let's go ahead and move on. Let's see here. Passing the horizon. Wow. This takes me back. Passing the horizon, as you know, is a defense against the bully who approaches you from behind. Remember, this is workshop three for this six day week block of material. A majority of the material deals with the bully who's behind you. Okay? So in passing the horizon, he he's behind you. I want you to picture this. And I know this is kind of tough because you may be doing this by yourself at home, watching the uh, YouTube channel. I encourage you to also tune into the Zoom classes. You'll get a different perspective. There are more people in the class. You'll see partner work training rather than just solo training what I'm doing now, okay? So the attacker grabs me from behind. Last week we said the first thing we want to do is stomp on it. Uh, I'm sorry. First thing you want to do is try to re-grab his wrist. Now what we want to do is neutralize it by stomping on his foot. Let's do a right foot heel stomp. Ah! You just stomped on his foot, watch his toes fly off. Let's stomp on his foot again. Ah! All right, he's behind you. Take your left foot, slide straight back in between his feet. I want you to picture that. We're going to elbow him right in the chest. Ah! Now hold on to the bully. Spinorama. You should be using your left leg when you kick. Ah! And you go right back to that stance. All right? Passing the rise. I want you to watch this time, okay? All right, just watch. I re-grab the bully's wrist. Neutralize, neutralize. Step in between his feet. Don't lose your balance like I just did. Neutralize with an elbow. Spin around. You should still have the, have the bully hold on the bully, holding on to the bully. He should be bent forward like so. We're going to kick him right in his tummy. You kick. And then go back. So, let's go ahead.
ahead and practice passing the horizon. By the way, you've probably heard me talk about this several times in the past. What you are doing now, solo training, when no one's there, it's just you, may be the most difficult type of training you can do. Why? You don't have any feedback. You don't have a bag there to kick. You don't have a partner there to put you in an arm lock. So if, if solo training, what you're doing now, if you don't have a partner, is some of the most challenging type of training to do, should your focus level be at the bottom of the pyramid, wondering about what you're gonna be doing after dinner or wondering what you're gonna be doing with your friends, okay? Should your focus level be at the bottom of the pyramid, okay? Or should your focus level be at the top of the pyramid really concentrating on re-grabbing with your right arm, stopping with the right foot, okay? Correct. Your focus level needs to be way up at the top, okay? I encourage you not to be daydreaming on this move. You know how they say martial arts can help with concentration and focus and things like that? Here's where you need to concentrate and focus. Because you're training by yourself, it makes it harder to kind of picture where the bully is, okay? Passing the horizon. Right arm behind you, left arm out. He has you in an arm lock. Is that cap concentration button on? All right, re-grab the bullies with wrist with your right hand. Right foot, stomp on his foot, stomp on his foot. His toes just flew off. Step back with your left foot to what we call a soft bow. From here, elbow the bully in the chest. Spinorama, stay focused. It's a left leg kick. Back leg, the bully's over there, this is a power kick. Boom, you could kick with your front leg. It'll work. What would be the advantage of kicking with your front leg? It's faster. What's the advantage of kicking with your back leg? It is more powerful, all right? Let's do it a few times, everyone. Right arm behind you, extend that left hand, re-grab the bully's wrist, neutralize, neutralize with your right foot. Step back with your left foot. You make sure that left foot's in back. It has to be the left foot or it won't work. Elbow with your left arm. Okay? Elbow again with your left arm. Elbow one more time with your left arm. Spin out. Your left foot's going to do the spinorama. The left foot's going to kick arama. You kick and go back. You may need to kick again. You kick and go back. All right? So, were you able to pull that one off by yourself? If you struggled a little bit as to which arm goes behind the back, which foot you're supposed to stomp, stomp with, that's okay. That's common. That's why you're here. That's why you practice these strategies. By practicing these strategies, whether it's on a YouTube channel, solo training, or whether you're watching Zoom classes when you can see two people teamed up at a time to get a better perspective of what it looks like, practice, practice, practice to make it a habit, all right? So, we're gonna hold off on a spinning back kick until next week. I wanna take a quick second. I'm gonna put my reading glasses on so I can see here, all right? So, from the study guide, you see the cover right there. Page 16, workshop number three. We practiced the cat stance back kick. We practiced number 14, the crossing back kick. And finally, we practiced strategy number 16, passing the horizon. Okay? So, how are we going to conclude today's class? Well... Rhonda says in workshop three, we should do mountain climbers. I'm looking off my cheat sheet. We should do squats, we'll do jump squats, and we should do alternating V-ups. Okay, what is a Tabata? A Tabata is a four minute exercise. Eight 20 second rounds with a 10 second break in between. Let's release some energy. Let's get, stronger upper, let's get a stronger upper body. 
Let's get stronger legs. I'm gonna do it with you. Let's do a full Tabata, four minutes. So I'm gonna turn the CD on and we're gonna start rocking. We're gonna start with mountain climbers. Follow along, okay? Follow along, everyone. Plank like position. Starting those mountain climbers. All right. Go. How fast can you go? Rhonda always says, don't let your head drop. Look straight ahead. Look straight ahead. Keep moving, folks. Awesome. Squats. Let's add the jump. Let's release some energy. All right, I'm going to do it with you. Let's go. Down and up. Down and up. Act like you're sitting on a chair. An imaginary chair. Keep moving. After this, we're going to do alternating V-ups. Awesome. I'm going to lay on your back. Your arms are straight. Your legs are straight in this move. Lift your body up. Lift your body up. Notice I'm keeping my arms straight and my legs straight. Keep going. Keep moving. Burpees. This is the fourth exercise. I'll give you a side view. Follow along. Come on, how many can you do in 20 seconds? How many burpees can you do? Keep moving. Keep going. Two minutes down. Two minutes to go. Mountain climbers, go! Look up, look forward. Keep your bottom down. You can do it. Jump squats. Come on. Three left. Three rounds left. Drop down. Jump up. Drop down. Jump up. Drop down. Jump up. Drop down. Jump up. Come on, you should be beating me by I do one, you should be three. Drop down. For every one that I do, you should be three. You're a lot younger. In a lot better shape. Alternating V-ups. Arms and legs are straight. For every one that I do, see if you can do three. Come on, you got this. You're almost finished. Awesome. Last exercise. How many burpees can you pull off in 20 seconds? There's one. How many can you do? Two. Three. Come on. A few more seconds left. Awesome. All right. Next week, I'm trying to catch my breath. Next week, we're going to wrap up the workshop, or start to wrap it up. Spinning back kick. The spinning back kick is going to have a lot of power because you're rotating your body. Also, the spinning back kick is one of those flashy moves that you kind of see on TV. I think you'll like it a lot. I'll see you next week, everyone. Thank you.